You know, when I, uh, the last year I worked on Initiative 1433 to raise our state minimum wage and win workers paid sick leave, which passed in Washington State by almost 60 percent. Now, one thing that I learned from that was that I was up in Snohomish County, in, in rural Snohomish County, talking to voters out there. And what was interesting is that that initiative to raise the minimum wage won precincts and won districts that Donald Trump won at the same time. And I had to ask myself, and a lot of people ask themselves, how did we get here? How did this happen? How could it be that both someone like Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump can be speaking to the same people? And how can it be the case that Donald Trump won? Well, my, my read on that situation, my read on what's been happening is that what Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders both spoke to was the economic pain, the real economic pain that working class people feel in this family, uh, feel, feel in, this, uh, in this country. But the difference is that one had a prescription for that pain, and the other was a wolf in sheep's clothing. Now, what do we know? What do we know that as a result of that happening? Now, my, my time at the Tenant Union, I fought ma major corporations and developers in this town to try to keep this city affordable. And it's just a cruel irony to me that now one of the biggest villains in our, in our nation's history is also a, a big you know, downtown developer, right? I have friends in New York who was fighting Donald Trump trying to evict rent control tenants uh, years before he, his ascendancy to power. Now, what I know from fighting developers here on a local level is that we have to keep our eye on the national level, but we also have to keep an eye on what big corporations are doing right here in Seattle. And that is why I'm running for, for Seattle City Council. Because when it comes... Because let's not forget that developers are some of the biggest corporations, right? Now, that is why it's so important that we keep an eye on a local level, because as we fight tooth and nail against the uh, Trump's administration's attempts to kick out immigrants and refugees, let's not forget that it's our own city that is kicking homeless people out and doing homeless sweeps left and right, and we must put a stop to the sweeps. At the same time that we are sweeping homeless folks from our, from, from, our city, from our city borders, we are seeing the biggest corporate giveaways to developers in the midst of our worst affordable housing crisis. Now let's think about this, right? A lot of people like to think that city council is just so progress, progressive, that Seattle is this amazing progressive town. But let's not forget that in, in the university district where the city council just voted to upzone the entire area that there was an amendment on the table, and that amendment said, we want to require that 10% of the housing that gets built be affordable, be affordable working class people. That amendment lost six to three. Now, I know, right? It's, it's incredible that in the midst of our worst housing crisis, we have a city council that is saying no to more affordable housing. And why is that? When you look at the kinds of city council races over the last couple of years, we are seeing hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars being thrown into these races. Why? Because land use is what these developers care about. And that is how we actually address income inequality in the city. That is how we address racial segregation. That is how we address the transference of wealth from one class to another. If we cannot make Seattle affordable, it will truly become a playground for the rich. But we have options. We can put a stop to that. We can actually make Seattle affordable for everyone so that immigrants and refugees can continue to live here, so that you know, Capitol Hill can continue to be historically the gay neighborhood of this city, that we can actually fight, that we can actually fight to make sure that uh, the city does something about the state ban on rent control and actually file a lawsuit against the state because it is unconstitutional. But we do not see that kind of leadership at City Hall. And the reason we don't see that leadership is because our council is bought and paid for by the big corporations and developers. That's right. And that's right. And that's why I've taken a pledge to accept, not accept any contributions from any corporations or developers. <laughs> and that matters, and it matters, right? Because that determines who you're beholden to. I, I was the first candidate to qualify for the Democracy Voucher Program. This is Seattle's public financing program. We have been able to raise $100,000. 95% of that is from Democracy Vouchers. My, 
Our average donation is just 19 bucks. So take that, Bernie. <laughs> now we love Bernie. Now look, the reason, I, the reason these numbers matter is because how we win matters. And we are gonna push this grassroots movement to make Seattle affordable for everyone so that we can fight not just for housing, but gender pay equity, climate justice, police reform. And let's not, let's also I wanna put this on your radar, on April 10th, there is an important vote happening at City Council where right now developers who are gonna get an upzone for South Lake Union and downtown, these are our wealthiest developers, the biggest corporations in town. Do you know what the affordability mandate on those buildings are gonna be? Each building only needs to be affordable, 2%. 2% of the building needs to be affordable. New York City and San Francisco has required affordability requirements as high as 25%, and we should do the same. Now, now the only way we do that is that we have to elect independent democratic socialist voices to the city council and also to the mayor's office. And I think that if we can, and if we can build that grassroots movement together, we can live in the city that we've always dreamed of, that we can have an equitable place. I'm running out of time. I do want to say this one last thing. We are gathering signatures to get, get, my, uh, get this campaign on the ballot. There's gonna be some petition forms circling around, please sign them. If every single person here donated their democracy vouchers, that would be $30,000 to support our campaign for an independent voice, a progressive voice on the city council. We'll be sitting right over there if you want, uh, after, the, uh, after the event, to, if you wanna pledge your democracy vouchers, I encourage you to stop by and support this cause. Thank you so much.